What if I told you you could complete a 10 second test at home in only two seconds that would tell you your risk for diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, and even cancer. And I told you that you could alter the results of those tests, changing your risk for those diseases simply by changing your lifestyle and supplementation. And what if I told you that by altering the results of that test, you could also improve your overall performance, your muscle strength and performance, and your overall longevity and wellness. Well, that's not clickbait. All of that is true. And that test is urine pH. And in this video, we're doing a deep dive on everything you need to know about urine pH monitoring and practical steps that you can take to improve your urine pH to improve your risk for all those diseases we just mentioned. So to understand urine pH, you really have to understand the basics of human acid base physiology. Basically, the human body really wants to maintain a very tight pH window between 7.35 and 7.45. If it gets out of this range, and especially if it gets too acidic, then all the enzymatic reactions in your body do not take place optimally, and then this downward spiral then leads to a lot of the disease processes we just mentioned. So, when your body takes on more acid, whether that's due to the diet, taking in more acidic foods, taking in more alcohol, producing more acid, such as producing more lactic acid with exercise, or even just producing a normal acid load from breaking down carbs and fat, all of that acid has to be buffered out to create a more basic environment to keep it within that normal 7.35 to 7.45 pH. Well, how does your body do that? Well, two main mechanisms. One is through the lungs. The lungs exhale carbon dioxide or CO2 and carbon dioxide when it's dissolved in the blood is an acid. So by getting that CO2 out, we restore proper pH balance. The second way and important for this video is the kidneys and the kidneys are able to excrete hydrogen ions or acid into the urine. And by doing so, they also decrease the body's acid load. So you could imagine if the body is experiencing a high acid load, your urine will also be under high acid load, or you'll have a low or acidic urine pH because the kidneys are trying to pump out all of that acid that the body is seeing. So now you can see why a low urine pH might be associated with many disease processes because it's associated with a more acidic environment in the body, which hurts enzymatic reactions, hurts all the processes of your body, which leads to disease. That being said, you also don't wanna to be too alkaline in your urine either. Many studies have shown that too high of a urine pH is associated with certain kidney stones, specifically calcium and phosphate kidney stones, while acidic urine pH is more associated with uric acid kidney stones. And too high urine pH is also associated with more frequent urinary tract infections or UTIs. That being said, the negative consequences of a too basic urine pH or a too high urine pH are much, much lower than the negative effects of a too low urine pH. And more people struggle with having too low of a urine pH. And for that reason, that's what we're gonna be focusing on the rest of this video. So what are the negative consequences of having a too acidic environment measured by having that too low of urine pH? Well, probably the number one consequence is metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome basically meaning insulin resistance, leading to diabetes, high triglycerides, increased waist circumference or obesity, high hemoglobin A1C, low HDL, and many studies have proven this effect, that the lower the urine pH, the more of these metabolic syndrome side effects you're going to have. The higher the A1C, the higher the triglycerides, the higher waist circumference, etc. And why is this? Well, it all drives from insulin resistance. The more acidic environment your body is in, the harder it is for insulin to actually reach its receptor. Essentially, the more acidic, the more insulin resistance we get because it inhibits insulin from binding to its receptor and promoting all the positive effects of getting more glucose into the cell. So with more acid in the body means more insulin resistance, and that leads to diabetes. And many studies have shown how urine pH is directly correlated with an increased risk for diabetes. It also leads to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And again, lower urine pH in studies also associated with higher incidence of liver disease. And finally, that insulin resistance and diabetes down the road does lead to cardiovascular disease. So a low urine pH is obviously very deadly just from a metabolic syndrome standpoint due to the insulin resistance. The next consequence of a too acidic or too low urine pH is poor muscle function and poor muscle gain. Essentially what happens is if your body becomes too acidic, your body will actually break down its own muscle to provide amino acids that can actually buffer 
the acidic environment. Furthermore, when you are in an acidic environment, the muscle also contracts suboptimally as well. And many studies have shown that low urine pH is associated with decreased muscle mass. And the mechanism is what we just mentioned. And finally, a low urine pH is also associated with problems in the kidney and bladder, which totally makes sense because more acid is being secreted out of the kidneys into the urine, which is in contact then with the kidneys and the bladder. This causes an increased risk for chronic kidney disease. And in the studies, a low urine pH of 5 to 5.5 compared to 6.5 to 7 is associated with a 32% increased risk for chronic kidney disease. This is largely due to the fact that all of that acid being secreted out by the kidneys causes inflammation and oxidative stress that leads to fibrosis or scarring within the kidneys. Also, you have an increased risk for bladder cancer with a low urine pH. The studies have shown that you have up to a 27% increased risk for bladder cancer due to having a urine pH of less than 6.0. And this is largely due to the fact that the acidic environment from that urine causes bad molecules to attach to DNA, which becomes carcinogenic. So an acidic urine pH is obviously associated with metabolic syndrome, poor muscle function, chronic kidney disease, bladder cancer, etc. So what are we going to do to actually test and make sure we aren't having that acidic urine pH? Well, what I would do is your first morning urine to get actual consistent results for at least a few times a week initially. I would pee in a cup and measure it with the pH strips I'm gonna drop a link for in the description. Essentially, you just need strips that are within actual normal human pH range and small enough increments to get an accurate measurement. Then you wanna make sure, are you actually in that optimal pH range? Which, what is that range? Well, most of the studies that look at urine pH mention that a low or acidic urine pH is less than 6.5. And most of the benefits come from when you get that urine pH greater than 6.5 compared to if it's lower. That being said, I ideally like to shoot for something closer to 7.0, but as long as you're greater than 6.5, you should be doing pretty well. But say you start measuring your urine pH and it's 6.0 or even 5.5, how do we increase our urine pH and decrease our risk for all these disease processes we mentioned? Well, the first way to increase your urine pH is through your diet. And here we have to introduce something called dietary acid load, or essentially how acidic is your diet or the food that you're eating. Dietary acid load is super associated with urine pH, and it's also associated with a ton of disease processes. A high dietary acid load is associated with increased risk for insulin resistance and diabetes, an increased risk for hypertension, an increased risk for chronic kidney disease, an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and mortality, increased risk for obesity, hypertriglyceridemia, an increased risk for depression and anxiety, an increased risk for cancer, and an increased risk for poor bone mineral density. All of this, again, speaks to the importance of making sure our urine pH is not too low, or in this case, making sure our dietary acid load is not too high. So how do we make sure that our dietary acid load is not too high and therefore our urine pH can increase? Well, the answer to that lies in how dietary acid load is calculated. It's generally calculated in two ways. The potential renal acid load or PRAL is essentially protein plus phosphorus minus magnesium, calcium, and potassium. And the other way is the net endogenous acid production, which is essentially just protein minus potassium. Essentially what these equations tell us is the acidic foods are those high in protein and phosphorus, and the more basic foods to balance those out are those high in magnesium, calcium, and potassium. So what we have to do is increase our intake of the basic foods. The magnesium, can, we can get that from sources such as legumes, tofu, flaxseed, chia seed, whole grains, etc. We can get increased potassium through things like bananas, oranges, avocados, leafy greens, and we can get increased calcium through things such as edamame, tofu, and kale, and really all leafy greens. And then we have to decrease or at least balance out all of those more acidic producing foods, aka the protein or the phosphorus. The types of protein really matters here, where animal protein generally has amino acids that are more acidic, glutamic acid, aspartic acid, or even sulfur containing amino acids. All of those create a more acidic environment compared to plant proteins such as tofu, tempeh, generally have more basic amino acids and therefore are generally for this purpose, better proteins to eat. And phosphorus is then high in a lot of the same things that your protein sources are in, such as 
your chicken, your red meat, as well as your dairy. So limiting those things can also lower your dietary acid load and therefore increase your urine pH. However, the key takeaway is here not to necessarily take out protein or take out phosphorus. It's really to balance it. So for instance, if you are an athlete or a bodybuilder or someone trying to increase your muscle mass and you're taking in a bunch of protein, that does help obviously for muscle synthesis, but the best way to do this would to be take in that same amount of protein, but balance it out with a bunch of alkaline sources. If you don't do that, you're gonna run in an acidic environment and your muscle will be broken down more to balance that out. But if you eat your protein with leafy greens, then you're gonna get that alkaline source as well and you'll live in a good pH balance and you won't break down your muscle at all. And then outside of just balancing out your protein and phosphorus with more leafy greens or vegetables, fruits, all those foods we just listed, truthfully, leafy greens probably being the best and most alkaline source. Outside of that, you can also consider magnesium supplementation. Starting at about 200 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate up to about 400 milligrams, that will also increase the alkalinity of your food and supplement intake which will again, lower your dietary acid load and increase your urine pH to where we want it to be. So the second main way outside of diet then to increase your urine pH is through hydration. And there has been many studies looking at the fact that the more water people drink generally, the higher their urine pH is. And this makes sense, right? Because basically what you're doing is diluting your urine by taking in more fluid, which will then increase the pH because there's less acid per amount of water that you're peeing out. So generally by drinking more, we can increase our urine pH. And you especially need to focus on this one if you test your urine in the morning and your urine is super, super concentrated, AKA very, very dark yellow compared to if your urine is a lighter color, you probably need to focus on this one less. But how much water should we actually be intaking per day to increase our urine pH? Well, this depends on a ton of factors, including age, sex, the environment you're in, etc. But a general rule of thumb from the National Academy of Medicine is if you're an adult male, you should be intaking about 3.7 liters of water per day, compared to if you're a female, you should be having about 2.7 liters per day. However, this does not take into account those that are athletes or those that are getting in a sauna every day or sweating off and losing a lot of your water. If you're an athlete, one of the best practices to do is before a normal workout, weigh yourself and then after that workout, also weigh yourself. You will have probably lost weight due to sweat and due to losing hydration through respiration. And then for every pound of water that you've lost, we need to intake 16 to 24 more ounces of water that day to replace the losses that you had during exercise. And I would do the same thing for sauna or anything that you're sweating a decent amount and losing water. With that information, my general recommendation is Men should be having about 3.7 liters per day at baseline, women 2.7. And then you should also on top of that be replacing your losses. If you're doing that, you're probably going to be hydrating well enough to increase your urine pH. And then finally, the third main way to increase your urine pH is to actually limit your salt intake or your sodium intake. This is probably the lowest contributor of the three that we talk about. However, it still does have an effect because basically when you have salt, you're having most often sodium chloride and that chloride basically displaces bicarbonate or base into the cells, and now you're living in a more acidic environment because of this. That is why studies have shown that a low urine pH is also correlated with a high sodium intake. But how high is too high, and what should we be aiming for to actually increase our urine pH by lowering our sodium intake? Well, the AHA, or American Heart Association, provides a good guideline of less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. But ideally, they say we should shoot for less than 1,500 milligrams per day. And I think this is a great place to start. And this is not a lot of salt. Only a teaspoon of table salt is 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So you really have to be careful watching your sodium intake, especially because 70% of your sodium intake is coming from your food, not extra salt that you're putting on your food from a shaker when you get to the dinner table. So it's going to be very important that you check your food to make sure you're not having a bunch of sodium intake especially watch out for those processed foods and those deli meats, especially. That's gonna really raise your sodium intake, which then will decrease your urine pH. So stay below that 1500 milligrams a day at least. Don't overdo it. Don't totally eat no sodium. But if, as long as you stay between 500 and 1500 milligrams of sodium, you're really gonna do yourself a lot of favors in increasing your urine pH this way. So what are my final recommendations on urine pH? 
your first morning urine, I want that to be above 6.5, but really I'd like to see it closer to 7.0 ideally. If it's not, what are we gonna do? Well, diet, we've gotta balance out those proteins with leafy greens especially. One leafy green salad a day is really gonna do you a lot of favors when it comes to increasing your urine pH. Also consider supplementing with magnesium, and we also need to hydrate. We need 3.7 liters as an adult male or 2.7 liters as an adult female and make sure to replace those losses. And finally, limit that sodium intake to less than 1500 milligrams a day. If you do those three things, you will increase your urine pH and hopefully get it above that 6.5 number that's going to lower your risk for metabolic syndrome and therefore diabetes, heart disease, you're also going to lower your risk for bladder cancer and lower your risk for chronic kidney disease. And you're going to feel better because your muscles are going to be performing optimally. You're going to perform better in the gym or at your sport or whatever exercise you do. So this could be super beneficial for you if you just follow those three steps to increase that urine pH. And if you want more information on how to improve your longevity through supplements, go ahead and check out this playlist here.